Welcome back to the Press Box, everybody. Another new edition and the first edition since the high school sports season has finally concluded. Mark, myself, Ken, and Holly can all take a deep breath, sit down, <sighs> and relax for maybe three weeks until we go back to it. Until we get back to basketball and uh, hockey and indoor track right. and everything like Wrestling. that. But, 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 what a, but what a fall season it was. And obviously it capped off this past Saturday at McMahon Field and Bath, the Camden Hills girls soccer team winning their third straight Class A state soccer championship with a one nothing win over Scarborough. Uh, Zach and I were both there. It was an amazing game. Um, Zach, what were your uh, what were your thoughts on uh, on on their performance on Saturday? But more than that, just you know being around here and this unbelievable run that this team has been on. This I have never seen this before. And in the state of Maine, there's only a select few teams, probably in the history of Maine high school sports, that have gone on a run like this that have won back to back. Mm -hmm. and then back-to-back-to-back to back to back yep. state championships. And then some have won four, maybe even five. And maybe in the Class D ranks, you might get a little bit more. But it I was uh, back, in the, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, the Valley boys basketball team won over 100 games in a row. That's crazy. Four straight state titles. That was D. That doesn't in any way, uh, you know... Take away from uh, it. Take away from the accomplishment. But but these things do happen, but they don't happen often. And I think Yarmouth has won the, won the past four, I think it's boys soccer state championships before they lost in the playoffs this year mm -hmm. they had won the past four straight i don't know if they lost games in between that or not but for the camden hills girls to have not lost a game since september 20th 2016 that's that's pretty damn impressive i was th i was thinking about that today the last time that they won obama was still in office that's crazy it's, <laughs> it's amazing it's been over two years and i mean they've had one tie in that 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 uh time frame and to win to win three straight state titles at the highest level of girls soccer in the state and it's not like they're going and beating, you know, uh, you know, Cinderella teams from the South, you know, six seeds. They're coming right. and beating. They beat Gorham the first year and then mm -hmm. Scarborough the past two years. And they've done it in impressive fashion. Granted, the first year they won was in overtime and against a really, really good Gorham team. It's still still impressive yeah, regardless. It is. But what, what what impresses me about this team is that it's always somebody different. I mean, like, you know, like Christina Kelly, Cassie Cruel, um, you know, Eliza Roy, they get a lot of the credit, but Ella Pierce in the in the yep. 28th minute scores the game winner in a one nothing game and uh, and you know on any other team in the state pretty much i mean she's probably the number one scoring option but she's like the fourth scoring option on this team but is she yeah she's almost like the one like you said the fourth scoring option you go down the list and christina and mm -hmm. cassie and eliza and then you get to ella or maybe maybe ella's up, up well there no a bit farther, the ella's they're, they're on, all just great ella's on par with all of them but that's the thing like you know if you're like you know okay we're gonna key on christina kelly well okay guess what now you got two other people you still got that's key right on. you know what i mean it's impossible they're impossible to defend for 80 minutes and that was i talked to mike farley the scarborough coach after the game and that's what he said he's like it's pretty hard to keep this team off the board for 80 minutes and i, I don't nobody's done it in a long long time mm -hmm. but uh, this has been an impressive run that this team has been on and um you know offensively defensively the midfielders um you know you look at a girl like izzy Lang, you're like, you know, obviously she's an incredibly talented goalie, but she doesn't get tested very often. We've seen her be tested in lots of big games, mm -hmm. but, you know, anybody that from far away probably looking like, you know, I wonder if the goalie's good. No, she's good too. Yeah, she, she just doesn't get a lot yeah, of chances. She, yeah, because the, and the defense was just as good as the offense was this year. Talking to Meredith after they won last year, she mm -hmm. said, well, next year might be a little bit tougher because we lose most of our defense because we had a bunch of seniors on defense. Yeah. And then Grace Blackwell, Blackwell Spazuko, Eve Gutines, mm -hmm. Eve um, Gutines. even uh, Tessa Whitley, the freshman, steps up and, and starts mm -hmm. for an undefeated state championship quality team as a freshman. It was just amazing how they basically just plug anybody in that they have on their team, and they're going to be just as good as the people that graduated. And I mentioned Izzy Lang. Uh, you know, she she made a diving stop in the first five minutes, as did uh, Scarborough's goalie Nicole Young. And Nicole Young, I mean, that girl, she played her ass off yeah, on Saturday. Yeah, she was great. I mean, like, she was standing on her head with some of those saves. I mean, she was being peppered with shots. I mean, uh, Christina Kelly hit a couple crossbars. She was, you know, I talked to her after the game, too, and she said she has never been that busy in yeah. a high school soccer game. I can ever. imagine, because yeah. Scarborough was undefeated going into the game, too, and they were kind of just rolling Their last people. loss was in the state final last year to Camden, yeah. and that team was also undefeated. So, like, Camden's the only team to beat this Scarborough team in two, two years. years. That's that's impressive. And no question it And is. there's always that mantra that the South, the, whenever a North team comes to play a South team, the South team's going to beat up on them a little bit because the South has 
many more resources than mm -hmm. the North teams do. Yep. But I think one big factor of why soccer is so good in the mid coast is because of the pitch. Absolutely. Out in Warren, because they can go there and practice on turf so they can get ready to play on turf, because most playoff games are played at neutral sites. Couldn't after, agree more. Um, and that just helps them out, I think, and not just for Camden, but for any other team that wants to the practice. The pitch is a big part of it, and that's a big part of the reason why a lot of the Southern Maine teams, like, you know, not only do they have, like, you know, bigger pools of kids to draw from down there but like you said they have a lot more resources they have a lot more indoor facilities the pitch is really the only facility like this up here in this yeah. general area i mean i think they have one up in hamden or bangor but i mean that's not you know that's an hour plus away you know i mean to have a resource like that here i mean and and not just the camden girls i mean you look at the oceanside girls the Med like the madamic like a lot of teams around here benefit from that yeah even the madamic girls soccer team they were almost knocked off presque isle yeah and they lost in overtime and almost went to what the regional final or something like that. That's right. That's right. right. Yeah, if they'd have won that, lost. they would have gone to the regional championship game, which would have been even more impressive. Yeah, but and it was a, but it was a great one, great run for the Camden girls soccer team. You know, so they're going to come back next year, and like they're going to be some seniors on that team, like uh, Kaylin Cruel and Christina Kelly and others. Ella Pierce. Um, Ella Pierce. They, they're going to be uh, gunning for a fourth state championship and in a row. I think they have a good shot of getting it. I think it. they have a good shot of getting it. The yeah. freshmen are just as good coming up, too. They have a great feeder system, which is, which is also probably the biggest thing of why they've been so good the past couple of years. Yeah, well, I, when I was talking to Meredith after the game, and then we'll, we'll get on to our next, uh, next topic, when I was talking to her after the game, she said one of the coolest things about this all the success that we've had is that it encourages more girls to come out mm -hmm. and play. Exactly. You know what I mean? Because you know, success breeds more, brings in more people. You know what I mean? Like, you know, if there's a successful program and you're like, you're little and you're like, I want to be a part of that. And guess what? You know, you work hard, you will be. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And like, and there are a lot of girls in like, you know, the Camden Rockport schooners, like the, the, the middle school players, they're looking up and they're going, wow, I want to be a part of that. And they will be, mm -hmm. you know? So, so congratulations to the Camden girls soccer team. But we also had another game we hit. Uh, as soon as that game ended, we shot up to Freeport, which wasn't too far from Bath. Up, down, same thing. Up, down, over. Oh, you're one of those people. <laughs> yeah, I'm just oh kidding. Oh my God. Like, you know, don't go up there. You don't go up to Freeport. You go down to Freeport. Well, you oh, you do. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, mom. <laughs> Got it. So we, we went down to Freeport <laughs> and uh, and we watched the Camden football team they uh, they lost to Freeport 12 to 6 another close game another close game and this is the second close game they played with Freeport Camden was the 4 seed Freeport was the 1 seed they played each other earlier in the season Freeport beat them 14 to 6 they win this game 12 to 6 we're walking in as we're walking in Freeport is scoring one of their touchdowns and it wasn't so, just a, like a, they drove the field it, I think was like an 80 yard yeah it was run it was it was a long like run it was a 60 plus yard run for sure so they were up six nothing as we're walking in and uh, and Camden you know they responded right back they they uh, they got a rushing touchdown uh, by John the uh, by the quarterback but it was called back by a hold which was which was you know tough for them to, to overcome and, and there were some turnovers and the weather wasn't great um, you know not to make excuses for them obviously but you know Freeport, they they added on another. Camden got a late score, um, but I mean, you look at you, you know, class. It's it's class E football. So a lot of these teams are in the same position. Like you know, they're trying to rebuild their program. They're trying to get bigger numbers. So even in a situation where like Freeport's the one seed and Camden's the four seed, there isn't a lot separating these teams. Yeah. It's it's that's very true because both teams probably had 20, 22, 25 kids tops yep. maybe twenty. I don't even think Camden had that. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Yeah, I think their their team looked a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Camden also fumbled the ball a lot in the second quarter, yep. which really hampered their chances. And but at the same time, they forced turnovers from Freeport as well mm -hmm. and got themselves back in the game and kept it as a close game. And obviously, I think the weather had a little bit to do with holding on to the ball. Because it was that mist, that constant mm -hmm. uh, mist, and uh, just making the ball just slick just enough exactly, where, just, it, where it's hard yeah, to really hold exactly. on to it. And you can't hold like a loaf of bread in those conditions. You have to hold it high and tight to your body, or else it'll just just flop out, or someone can just punch it out very easily. Yeah. The, and the turnovers for Camden were tough. I mean, like they, they, you know, obviously Freeport capitalized on a couple of those, got scores off of that. But you know, Camden had a couple chances too. Like they they were uh, they they punted the ball in the second quarter. And, uh, and there was a penalty that basically put their offense right back on the field. It was a mm -hmm. roughing the puncher penalty. And, you know, they only had about 35 yards to go to a touchdown there. They get stopped there. I mean, you look back at a play like that and you're like, you know, geez, like if they could have, you know, stuffed one in there, tie the game 6-6, I mean, maybe mm -hmm. the complexion of that game changes. But, you know, you, you know, but these are, you know, these are high school kids and these are small programs. And, you know, and, you know, all those kids play their butts off on Saturday in, uh, in not great field conditions. Yeah. Yeah. 
it wasn't very fun to be out there either. No, no. Everywhere you turn, there's wind and rain and you're getting peppered. <laughs> wind and, and rain and trying, trying to keep, keep your, your cameras camera dry. dry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, it wasn't, well, that wasn't ideal. It's never ideal when you're, uh, when you're going to spend all day outside and it's, yep. it's raining and you're under, under umbrellas and things like that. But, but, uh, but it was a great season for them as well. Um, you know, Camden, they don't get to the, the playoffs uh, too often with football. And, uh, you know, they got a playoff win. They got a playoff win over Old Orchard Beach. And that's a good thing for the program to hang their hat on. And, and next year, you know, I'm not sure if they're still, they would still be an E next year or if they'd be able to know. appeal up. Um, I don't know if their numbers are there yet. Um, but obviously the ultimate goal is to get them up into like, you know, playing class D or C or B to get those numbers. So hopefully those numbers are coming for the Camden football team. So let's, yep. uh, let's uh, shift gears really quickly. And uh, we haven't been talking NFL. Yeah, it's, I think we've talked NFL once since it started. Yeah. Well, I mean, preseason we did. We've been so busy with these world champion Boston Red Sox that we really haven't had a chance to talk much football. So, I mean, uh, you know, it, so, since we've talked, I mean, the Patriots, they've, uh, they've, they've rattled out this, their sixth straight win yeah, last week. Yeah, something like that, yeah. Yeah, so now they're going uh, to Tennessee this week to play the Titans. Um, you know, what are your, uh, what are your thoughts on, uh, on this matchup with, uh, with what's, what's kind of becoming uh, Patriot South? Yeah, I have to say, I'm a little disappointed <laughs> in Tennessee. I thought they'd be a little bit better la this year because they made the playoffs last year and they gave the Patriots a run for their money in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be another good game. I think it, it'll be close. I think it'll be really close, actually. Um, you know, a couple former Patriots on that team and mm -hmm. uh, Deion Lewis and uh, Malcolm Butler. So we'll see. And uh, Coach Mike Vrabel. Yeah, and Vrabel. Yeah, Vrabel's the head coach now. Yep. He hasn't been with the Patriots for a while, but still comes mm -hmm. from the Patriot organization. It'll be interesting to see. I think the Patriots will win, but I think it'll be a close game. And uh, I think the Titans. A little bit, like I said, a little bit of a disappointment this year because they're a four and what, four and four, something like that. But they're, but three. they're one, but they're one of those teams that you can't really sleep on. Yeah, like that's they're, true. Like they, they play up to competition and they also kind of play down to competition. Mm -hmm. I mean, hell, like my, my Eagles lost to the Titans earlier this that's year. True. That was that was an overtime game. I think your Eagles have been a little bit of a disappointment this year. Too. Yeah, well, yeah, they're they're definitely feeling a little bit of that Super Bowl hangover. I think we're five and four, five and four, four and four, something like so this, that. Yeah, I think I think yeah, we were four and four going into the Jacksonville game in London and we won that one. Yep. So this week we've got Dallas, who's kind of reeling. Um, which is which is nice. You know, we're kind of hopefully catching some teams at the right time. Of course, I just saw that uh, that Darren Sproles is going to miss his eighth straight game. Really, mm -hmm. really like yeah, to have some running, running backs. Back. Yeah. We need some running backs, but we did just trade for Golden Tate, so we got some more uh, offense at receiver, and that that'll be nice. Give Wentz a few more options, maybe open up Aguilar and Jeffrey and Ertz a little more. You know, give you more. But I mean, like, but their uh, their their cornerback situation is uh, is concerning. Um, you know, they've they've got some holes in defense. You know, just like most teams do. Um, but uh, but yeah, like we have Dallas this weekend, and you guys have Tennessee this weekend, and you know it should be a should be a fun fun weekend for football. Yeah, sure. the uh, biggest surprises this year so far, the Chiefs mm. being the Chiefs, think they still only have that one loss to New England. Yep. And then the Saints went in and beat the Rams yeah. in a very high scoring game. No defense. That was that was that was such that, a fun game to watch. It was. It, it, was, was, it was very Super Bowl Fifty Two esque. They Not a lot a of defense. A lot of back and forth. Yep. Be, I think the Saints will be a uh, force to reckon with in the playoffs, and uh, I think the Chiefs will too. I think we'll see. Maybe we'll see a Kansas City and New England AFC Championship game, and I, th I think the Saints the, and Rams probably NFC Championship game. That's that's the AFC Championship game. I think everybody wants to see. You know, but you can't you can't discount Philly in the NFC. I'm um, not homerism aside. You also can't discount Green Bay. Because they've got Aaron Rodgers. I mean, like that's that's a, that's a tough thing to overcome. Minnesota's defense is really good. I think the NFC is a lot more open than the AFC is. I think yeah. you look at the AFC and the Patriots and the Chiefs. They're clearly the, the One, class two. of a of the AFC. But in the NFC, it's a lot more open. But like, if you had if you put a gun to my head and said, who do you think? I would say it's going to be the Rams and Saints in that NFC title yeah. game. Those two Easily. teams are going to be tough to beat. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. That's all we got. Yeah, that's all we got for you this week. But we'll we'll be back next week, and we're gonna be uh, we'll be talking some basketball. Maybe we'll even talk a little hockey if we can. Uh, you know, we'll yeah, definitely we, we uh, got to catch up on everything now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's funny too, because like you know, we haven't had a lot of time at home to, to watch a lot of Celtics or Bruins or anything yet. Like you know, like my, my wife and I, we've just been watching a lot of a lot of uh, you know shows that we've been trying Catching to catch up, on yeah. shows and movies and things like that. And um, but you know, we'll have to. Uh, well, we're gonna jump back in, and we're gonna you know talk a little about a little bit about Kyrie Irving and. You know uh, how the Celtics are doing and how the Bruins are doing, and you know we'll uh, you know by then we should know uh, who the AL MVP is. Yes, that is decided tonight. We have strong indications to believe it'll be Mookie Betts. I can't imagine it, be it wouldn't else. be him. But by this time next week, we'll have all the awards to talk about next week, and uh, maybe even some local stuff as well. We've got a uh, All State Field Hockey, KVAC All Conference yep, stuff that's right. all going to be coming out soon. Uh, so we'll uh, get some local stuff in there for you next week as well. In the meantime, I'm Mark. This is Zach. This has been the Press Box.